Sadhguru, with such a powerful mechanism set up for a human being to evolve and be liberated in this place, is there a need to do any rituals in Kashi? Because you know what I hear from you is that there is a great design to this place, the yantra you talked about. So your mere presence here should be enough. Still, I see many people come here to do rituals of various kinds. What is the significance of such rituals? Kashi is full of rituals. It was the center of rituals. There is nothing as surefire as doing something internally. That is the best way to do it. So once you've been initiated into your process, that is what you should depend on. Why these things are built is, it's for the public. They do not know how to do anything with themselves, but they know enough that something needs to be done with them. So when that is the case, an instrument like this and the complex rituals that came along with the instrument are very useful because it handles people en masse. There was something called a Saptarishi Puja. Saptarishis means the seven sages who were the first disciples of Shiva. They were to leave to carry this message and go. When they asked him, how should we worship you? He taught them a method. He said, you do it this way, I will be there. That method was taught to them and they taught to the people and today it continues in the same tradition. The way Shiva taught it to the seven sages, that process they started off. And they did it in such a way, stacks and stacks of energy they built. This may not be tangible for other people, for me it's a living reality. And people will just burst into tears, they don't know what it is. Those who are doing it, they do not know how it happens. But they're sticking to the procedure that's been taught to them and making it happen. See, the guy who's driving this boat does not know how to build an engine, he's just learned to use it and it works. So they just learned to use it. As the Saptarishi should have done, seven people sat down there and they did this and it was a phenomenon. I've never seen anything so energetic in any temple. I've been to quite a few, wherever I feel it's an energy center, I go. I don't go there to pray, <laughs> I don't go to ask, I've never done Abhishekams and Pujas in any temple in my life, okay? But this is a phenomenal science. You must come and sit in the Dhyanalinga temple. No ritual, no mantra, no puja, no nothing. It's always in total silence. Just come and sit there and see. Because it's essentially created for meditativeness. People who have no idea what's meditation, people who have no instruction, without an instruction, you can make people meditative. So these are technologies, these are not belief systems. Technology has gone bad. <laughs> My last question to you is, when somebody comes to Kashi, uh, what is a must one should experience here? First of all, to come prepared a little bit. I would say, if you're traveling to Kashi at least for three months, get initiated to some simple meditative process, meditate for some time, make yourself little more sensitive and come. Leave all your beliefs at home and come. Thank you, thank you. It was really a pleasure. <laughs> this is the most complex and sophisticated machine on the planet, that's Kashi. It's phenomenal that somebody created a place like this. We bow down to them for the intelligence behind it, the competence behind it, the vision behind it, the compassion behind it, to make it available to everybody. This is what the world needs not dogma, not philosophies, not belief systems. Human ability to go beyond our sense organs and be able to perceive something which is right now considered beyond. This is the only way a human being will know. This is the only way a human consciousness will expand. This is the only way a human being will evolve beyond narrow divisions that have happened in human societies. But those instrument are be instruments are being systematically destroyed. It's… it's important that these things are brought back. Past we have survived. The question is, the future will we survive? 
This has been unfortunate history of humanity that the greatest things on the planet will not survive, the crudest things will survive. Unless societies, individual human beings take care to nourish them, it's very important. If you want a refined society for tomorrow, for our children and their children to live, if we want a refined society, it's very important we nurture the sophistication that is around. Otherwise, crude things will dominate anyway. Very easy to manifest the crude, very difficult to manifest the sophistication because it takes thousands of years to evolve it. So, it is a responsibility that we have as a generation of people to bring out the subtle aspects of life and somehow to make them live to whatever extent everybody can do. If we cannot create another Kashi, the existing one we should preserve to whatever extent we can and create more instruments through which human beings can connect to larger possibility. We don't need more books to read, we need more practical instruments and methods through which a human being can expand his sense of who he is right now.